So today we're going to do the handover video on the Bursner Elegance i910G. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. So firstly, coming over to the passenger side is your bonnet release catch. Open up the passenger door. And underneath here, just located there, you have got your bonnet, bonnet release catch. Pull that and that will release the bonnet. Whilst I'm on this side as well, you will also notice that you've got your diesel fill up point, which is just into there. And this vehicle does use add blue, which is when I open up the bonnet, you'll be able to see where that's located. Whilst the passenger door is open, you'll notice that in all of your windows you have blinds, which will black out the entire cab as you can see. And they'll just connect up onto the met magnetic strip here, like so. Take that in just like so and let that clip into the side as it is there. Now these can get tangled so do bear that in mind when you are pulling this make sure you pull it straight keep an eye on the top and the bottom just so it doesn't get stuck or jammed. Moving across now with the bonnet open I'll just point out a couple of things underneath here there's not many things that you need to know um, but as I say um, I'll just point out a couple of things as I did mention you need add blue on here which is just located underneath the bonnet here as indicated now your add blue is fully topped up from factory and when that is empty or running low you will get a warning symbol on the dash behind this you've then got your power steering fluid You've then got your brake uh, disc fluid, which is just be um, behind that. And moving on to the other side, you can see that you've got your washer fluid, which is just onto here. Now, the only main things that you're going to need to know is if you ever jump start in the vehicle. If you are jump starting the vehicle, all you've got to do is twist this like so. If I move my hand, you can see there. And that is for your positive, so your positive can connect onto here. And then right at the bottom, it's quite difficult to see. But just onto that little lug there, as you can see, that is your negative. So you've got your negative, which is down onto there. And as I say, your positive, which is just onto there. And that is if you ever jump start in the vehicle. Moving away from the bonnet, moving around to the side, you can see that you've got your full length awning, which is on the side here. This is a full awning. And to operate this, you'll have an awning pole, which will connect into there. Turn that halfway to get that um, connected into the awning and then you can simply wind out you've then got two legs which will drop down to take the weight of the awning um, and then you can lock them into place as a rule of thumb with anything like this as the the awning has obviously got the canvas underneath you, as you can imagine this is a massive sail um, so what can happen is you can get wind underneath that which can potentially snap the awning so if it is a windy day um, do put that awning in just be careful and mindful of that now moving on, you have got your hookup point which is onto here and that's for your 230 volt hookup when you're on a campsite. You've then got a little bit of storage underneath here as you can see, I've just lifted up that and that is all the way through across to the other side. Above this, notice that you've got your fridge vents either side and then this is your barbecue point which will just open and obviously once you've got your gas turned on that will allow you to feed through and use the barbecue. Moving to the rear you have got your large locker door which I've opened for you to gain your access to the garage. In the rear here you'll notice that you've got your awning pole on here along with your cab carpet and your ladder for your front drop down bed. This vehicle has come fitted with an external shower point which I will show you on the other side and you can see that using a bayonet fitting which is attached to the end of the shower that can simply connect in and you can then begin using it. I'll move across to the other side but you will also see that you've got some fluid A, B and C which is located in the back there. As I say I'll come round and explain that, what that is for. But whilst on the topic of that you have got some more refill fluids there for yourself. Moving on to the other side, as I say, these are your A, B and C fluids. And what these use are chemicals to, in essence, break down your, um, your waste, which will go into your toilet. The nice thing with this uh, elegance, and I'll go into more detail on this when I come down to, when I come on to uh, draining the vehicle, which will be next. Um, but in essence, all of your waste will go into your toilet cassette, 
or your, your toilet tank rather, and rather than removing a cassette, you can simply empty it um, using a different system which will be on the side of the vehicle. Now as this goes into a tank and is filtered out through a um, pump, that waste naturally needs to be broken down and thanks to the A, B and C fluids, that's what breaks down the components. Now they just clip in here, all you need to do is push this in, lift that up, as you can see you can then remove the fluids like so and make sure that these are all clipped in to prevent them from falling out. Before moving on from the garage as well, you can see that you've got your vents here either side just to insulate and heat this garage should you need to. Moving on from the garage and moving on to your toilet uh, black tank, as I mentioned on the inside, uh, on just, uh, just then uh, on the inside of the garage, instead of using a cassette uh, for all of your waste to drop into and then removing the cassette, with this system all of your waste will go into something called a black tank and using the fluid in the back uh, as described and explained that will break down um, all the components of the waste and allow that to come out in a liquid form. For draining this down, all you need to do is simply pull the wheel out like so. You then need to flip up the handle like so, and then you can simply remove up. I'll untangle this now for you, uncoil it, and show you how that works. Once uncoiled, as you can see, I have now the device in hand. You've got a blue tab which is on here, and all you need to do is click this in and then coming up to your um, your panel here, you can see that you have two buttons. Click the first button, and that'll allow you uh, to open the uh, the pump. Uh, sorry, to open the um, the system to activate the pump, so you can then drain out all of the fluid. So all you need to do is click that button, that blue button. Click this button in, and that will empty all the waste from the underside of this. Now on your campsite you'll have a large grid or you'll have an area where you can um, where you can dispose of this and as I say you need to simply walk this out, uncoil it, press that blue button there and then press the button here and that'll empty all of the waste like so. Once you've done that with this all you can do is stick this back onto here making sure that you're holding the handle at all times and then to coil this in you can then Turn the device like so and that will coil up. With that all coiled in like so, you can then push down the latch just to latch that in and then swing the arm back in. Before moving on, you have also got a drain down plug here. So if you wanted, I'd leave this open. So if there's any additional waste or any water that was to drip onto here, that can simply drip out the van like so. As I say, you have got a plug which was just connecting to there, should you want to leave that. As I say, if it was to move on, I'd probably leave that on, that open. So if there are any um, little bits of water or any bits uh, of fluid to come out, that'll simply drain out the vehicle. Next, you've then got your fresh water uh, fill up point, which is just into there. Just need a key onto there to release that. And all you need is a food grade hose pipe to connect that into there. Um, to fill up the system. Once that's coming out, of course, you know that the system is full. Across from here, as I mentioned on the inside of the garage, you have got an external uh, shower point, which is on the side of the vehicle here. Um, similar to the barbecue point, you just need to unlock that to, unrele to release this. And then using the bayonet fitting, as I showed you on the end of the shower, you can simply connect that up and use the shower. Underneath here, as you can see, you have got a bit more storage as well, which, as I showed you from the other side, will go all the way through. Now, you'll notice that you have got two drain down points here, which are in the up position at the moment. And with this vehicle, you have three main sources to drain down, or four rather. You have your black tank, which is usually your toilet cassette. You have your fresh water, and then you have your waste water. Um, and in this vehicle as well, you have a boiler drain down point. Now your boiler drain down point is this here and this allows all the water from the boiler once primed to drain out of the vehicle. In the up position it is open and then in the down position like so 
it's closed. So when in use, you need to make sure they're always closed to ensure that that can complete the circuit and you can get water into your boiler. But when you are traveling and moving off site and no longer using the vehicle, simply flick them up like so into that position. You need to make sure that they're always like that when not in use, because what you don't want to do is run the risk of getting frozen water in the system. Because if you wasn't to do that, as I say, um, water in the cooler climates will simply freeze and ultimately break the boiler. So do make sure of that. Next, you've then got your gas locker. As you can see, you've got space for two gas bottles here. Um, and then you have got obviously a point where you can connect your gas bottles up via a pigtail to the gas regulator. Now, as you can see, you have got a little arm on here, which located by this little pin here, will ultimately decide which gas bottle is being used. So for example, if you have a gas bottle here, indicated by the little arm on the side here, which will point to this direction, it will use this gas bottle. And then when you run out of here, all you need to do is simply twist that like so. So the arm is just facing this way and then the gas will be used out of that bottle there. So dead simple. Now, unlike a lot of gas bottles, uh, gas bottle regulators rather, you will have a point where you can turn your gas on at the bottle um, and feed that into the vehicle. Now, what you have got on this is a crash sensitive um, uh, gas regulator. So if you was to crash, your gas bottles will automatically get cut off um, from going into the vehicle, so no gas can travel, and that is done on the inside, which I'll show you on the control panel. But that, as I say, is your gas locker, which is just there. Now that completes the outside of the Elegance. We're now gonna move on to the inside. Okie dokie, moving on to the inside of the vehicle, and coming up to your control panel, if you were to open this up, you can see that you've got access to all of your controls. Now to firstly turn the panel on, all you need to do is click your button. As you can see by that lighting up, everything will be activated. You can see that some of your lights have turned on there as well. Just coming down to the bottom, you'll notice that you've got your step button here. Across from that, you have two lights. One light is for this strip light here, and also a light just above the habitation door, which in essence is your porch light, so it's easy to, to see when you are coming in. And then your second light is for your awning, which is just on the side there. The next light above that, uh, next to that rather, is a strip light, and this will control the internal lights for the vehicle. If I click them, you can see, gives you certain lights, which will turn on like so. With them on, coming back up to the control panel. How this is operated is using the turns, um, turn option. Um, you can then flick through the options like so. So firstly, you've got your habitation, uh, your, yeah, your habitation uh, battery voltage, which is indicated there which as I say, through turning the dial will indicate. If you turn again, it'll then show you your vehicle battery, which again shows you your voltage and percentage there. And then moving across down, it'll give you your vehicle temperature, which is internal to the vehicle, and then the external temperature, which is there. Before moving on to your pump, if I just slide to the options as well, you'll notice up at the top, you have two buttons. You have one for the fresh water and one for the waste water. And these, similar to your, uh, your vehicle battery um, and habitation battery levels, will show you what your percentage is. However, as you can see, nothing is coming on the screen because how the, this system works is it's now gone to a smart system where you can download an app, the Thetford app rather, which will show you exactly what your uh, your levels and uh, water levels are. On the day, what I'll do is I'll show you how that operates. But in essence, this screen you do not need to use because you can simply use that app, which will tell you ex everything you need to know. Now, coming down to your pump, all you need to do, as you can see, this is in the off position, simply click this button in and that will turn the pump on. I'm not going to turn it on now because we've no water in the system. However, as I say, if I was to turn that on, that'll activate the pump. 
once you've done that with all your water on with all the water in rather you need to come to each of your taps including your shower turn them on and turn them to hot what that's going to do is it's going to pull fresh water from the fresh water tank into the system it's then going to pull it through to the boiler which as i say outside make sure that that boiler is closed so this can happen it will then pull through to the boiler priming the boiler and then it will dump it out of the tap it will first split and splitter um, and splutter rather um, this is the same for the shower however when it's running steadily you have prime your system once you've done that on the hot water flick it over to cold and do the exact same and then all you can do is you've got micro switches on each of your taps so for your pump you can simply leave that on because each time you need to operate um, or use the water simply turn your tap on and that'll activate the pump and it'll just send it out just like you get at home obviously as i say at the beginning you need to make sure that you only run that pump with water in the vehicle because if you don't you'll simply burn out the pump which is something that you don't want coming on back from the uh from the pump you'll notice that you have got some controls up here as well you have a blank should you ever want something fit in there and you've then got two controls which is just here now firstly as i mentioned outside with your gas bottles this has an old uh, a gas um, regulator um, which is built in which is uh, crash proof in essence and that'll automatically um, stop any gas from going into the vehicle if you used to have a crash due to safety to turn that on simply press the button there and when indicated green like so that'll just show you that that is on and in operation i'll turn that off for the time being beneath that you've then got another switch if you push that on you can see that you've got a glow behind that light there i'll just turn it off for the time being as it's not in use but what that does is that'll uh, heat up your engine coolant and that'll allow the engine to get warm so in essence for example, if you was moving off site in the next half an hour, so you were packing up everything up, what you can do is click this button on. That'll warm up that engine. So that means when you are ready to go and traveling, you'll get instant hot air out of the aircon in the cab and the engine will all be up to temperature so you can move off simply and easily. And as I say, that's all done from up there. The final thing in this control cupboard is your Aldi heating system, which if I click on, will activate the Aldi. Now your Aldi heating system is a wet central heating system, works very sim similar to central heating at home. You've got a pipe with water in and that goes the length of the vehicle. Um, to operate this, all you need to do is click on your menu and as you can see, you have a few options. At the top, you've got your vehicle temperature that goes all the way up to 30 degrees and obviously you can alter that accordingly. Beneath that, you've then got your water temperature this is now in the off position using the plus that'll give you halfway and then another plus will give you your full temperature the halfway point is approximately 40 degrees so you'll use it at that temperature for example when you are uh, having a shower and then when you're washing up you can put it on the full maximum temperature which is around 70 degrees and that'll allow you to uh, to obviously wash up and wash your pots and pans and things I'll just turn that off for the time being. Beneath that, you've then got the option of fuel. There's two ways of fueling this. You can either use electric or gas. To operate that, you've got the option of one kilowatt electric, two kilowatt electric, or three kilowatt electric, depending on how much electric you are supplied with on site. More often than not, you will be forced to have it on two kilowatt electric due to the site's power. Beneath that you've then got the option for gas, so if you wanted you can run the system off gas. So for, for example if you're wild camping you can simply run it off gas so that'll do all your, uh, your vehicle's temperature and heating off the gas system um, and that'll run your, uh, leisure, uh, sorry, your um, vehicle heating along with your uh, shower and water temperature as well. In the corner here you'll notice that you have got your settings panel. The main thing that you need to know in here if I flick through is your reset button which is up at the top there now your reset button will only need to be used if you want to ever get an error code now you'll get an error code usually more often than not because you've selected a fuel um, that you don't that you can't use in essence um, so or that isn't supplied so for example if you're on site and you're trying to um, heat the water or the vehicle using a fuel that you've not got albeit let's 
use, uh, let's say, gas, for example, you're trying to heat the vehicle with, with gas. But for example, if you've run out of gas or have no gas in the vehicle, um, it won't allow that to do it. So you'll get an error code on here, uh, which will force you to then reset the system, which can be done in the settings. Now you will notice on this uh, menu button, you have got an A, which stands for auto, which will automatically assign whatever fuel, uh, fuel you have in the vehicle. Um, so what I would do if I was you is click that, leave that on, and that will automatically assign whichever fuel you have, just to uh, prevent that issue um, of getting an error code from occurring. To turn this off, all you need to do, simply press the button here, let go, and that'll turn off the system like so. Now moving away from the control panel and before I move into the kitchen area, you'll notice on the floor you've got a series of locker doors which you can access. Now underneath them all, what you've got is if I open up the first one, you have your leisure battery, which is located there, along with your fuse box, which is just next to there. That's in the first one. If I open up the second, you've get, then got your Aldi heating uh, boiler system. This is where this is located. Um, luckily enough, you don't need to do anything in here. As I say, your boiler drain down points uh, just into that locker, which is just through there, um, which is really easy to access. Um, but this is where your boiler is located. This is mainly for the technicians who work on the vehicle. The next one along, as you can see, this is your CAN bus system. Again, a fuseless system. Again, you don't really need to um, access this. This is mainly for the technicians. However, that is located underneath there. And moving forward, you'll notice that you've got in here your RCD breaker. So if the vehicle ever trips, you can simply come to this unit here. Flick this up and then test your RCD breaker and trip the vehicle. Now, for example, you'll notice that you have got a small little button here, which has a little T on it, which, which stands for test. So for example, if you're on site and you can't get any power to the vehicle um, and you, you don't know uh, where, where the issue is, simply come on to your RCD breaker, simply click, click that test button. And if all of these um, switches trip, you know that you're getting power to the vehicle. So it's therefore not a fault with the site or the hookup cable that you're using. It's a fault with your vehicle. Um, from there, you can then test your fuses uh, and look through the manuals. Uh, it just helps you isolate the issue and obviously uh, and get a gist of, of where the issue is going. More often than not, if you can't get power on it to the vehicle, it's often an issue with the site or the hookup cable you are using. And then finally, opposite this, you know, I've got another, um, another uh, storage point here. Um, and again, this is just for your e-box. Again, not something that you need to access. It's just there for the technicians. Whilst in the lounge, I'll show you that underneath each of these bench seats, you have got two flip-up travelling seats which face forward. I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll remove this cushion now and just show you how they work. As you can see, with the cushions removed, this will then gain you access to the uh, travelling seat, which just fold into the little box there. Now, to unfold this, all you need to do, you've got a lever on the side here. Simply push that and that will release the seat. You can then pull the base up and then using this second lever here, which once this is unfolded, you can pull and that will allow you to bring it up and lock it into position. And as I say, you've got one here and then one at the other side there, which will allow you to face forward for your passengers. You will also notice just behind this seat, and they are located here, there and everywhere in the vehicle, you have got this little um, little pipe here with a breather valve on the end. That's nothing to worry about. This is just simply for your glycol solution, which is an antifreeze solution. Um, and as I say, that is run around the vehicle just to stop your Aldi system with the heating in uh, from freezing. Before moving back from the lounge, you'll notice that you've got your drop down bed at the front here. To operate this, all you need to do is unhook each of the clips there, put your key in here and turn that and that'll activate your bed. Then fold down your two front seats and then press the button to drop that into place. I'll just demonstrate that for you now. With the two front seats uh, folded down like so and the clips unbuckled, I've then put the key in and that'll allow you to activate the drop down bed. 
as you can see that's just dropping into place like so and this will drop all the way down into the cab you can then get your ladders which I showed you on the inside of the uh, on the inside of the garage which will allow you to clip onto here and then up you go the great thing with this bed is you can also leave all your bedding on and then you are good to go just take that up like so so press the button and that will allow you to take the entire bed up and as I say you can keep all that bedding on and that will neatly tuck away up to the top there Now one thing to know is once this is at the top and locked in like so do come to each of your buckles and simply lock them in just for safety just to make sure that as you're travelling nothing is unhooked. Moving into the kitchen area you'll notice that you've got your hob which is here you've got three gas rings at the top and then your oven and grill which is beneath that. You then storage which is just below as you can see and then in this cupboard you will notice that you've got three isolated taps which are grey taps here um, again you don't need to do anything with them they're isolated taps and will isolate certain areas of the vehicle that is simply just for us and the technicians when working on the vehicle you've storage all above as well your book packs are located in here but as you can see You've massive amounts of storage above the kitchen area. Opposite your worktop space, you can see that you've got your fridge. This is a Dometic fridge and will open from both sides. Now your fridge, is one, one thing to, to note with it, is it's not like a domestic fridge uh, due to the power that it, that it, uh, that it takes. Um, so it does a very good job at maintaining the temperature of food, but doesn't do the best of temperature. It uh, doesn't do the best of jobs, sorry, getting it down to temperature. So what I recommend is if you want frozen things in the freezer, put frozen things in. And if you want cooled things in the fridge, put cooled things in and it will just maintain that temperature. Now to operate this, all you need to do is hold it on the wheel like so. And that will turn the system on. Using the dial, you can then turn between the options. So click in and that will allow you to turn through the options like so at the top you've got your vehicle te uh, your um, temperature sorry for the fridge which if you click in you can then alter accordingly press in again you've then got the options of fuel this is a three-way fridge so if you wanted you can run off gas like so your mains electric or finally your 12 volt leisure battery or you have got the option of auto, which will automatically assign, similar to your heating system, it'll automatically assign whatever fuel you have available. Now, just quickly on the fuel, uh, what I recommend is keeping it on the auto, just so it's easier for you. However, just to explain what you can and can't use, your gas you can use, obviously, when you're off on a site. Um, for example, if you're wild camping, more often than not, you'll run the fridge off gas. If you're travelling, you run the vehicle off your 12 volt leisure battery and then when you're hooked up on site you run the vehicle off your um, hookup point which it was indicated it's just gone off now but it was indicated by the little plug which indicates 230 volt now a lot of people think that they can run the fridge off the 12 volt system when they're wild camping however that isn't the case and um, because you'd simply drain out all the power due to the amount that this consumes so due to the built-in alternator which is on the inside of the vehicle which will power the leisure battery that allows you when you are traveling to ultimately power the fridge via the 12 volt due to that constant charge that it's getting from the alternator but as i say if you keep that on your auto we've just come through now like so if you click keep that on the auto like so and then activate that that'll automatically assign whichever fuel you have and have access to. Beneath, you've then got brightness of the screen and a few settings that you can alter with. To turn this off, all you need to do is hold the button in and as indicated by the beep, that'll just turn off the entire fridge. Moving on from the kitchen, you'll also notice in the floor, you have a few more panels through. In this one, it's just storage and it's a really good storage area. As you can see, that goes all the way down 
into the vehicle like so and then you have another two as i say in the bathroom area um which contain drain down points which i'll show you in a minute moving into the bathroom space using the dividing door this allows you to divide the entire section and in here as you can see you have your toilet and also your shower now we've discussed about your shower obviously and how that works in terms of uh, pulling water through um, along with all of your taps when priming the system but as i say the toilet on this is a completely different system to what you will have typically had um, with a normal cassette with it now having a black water tank now how that black water tank works is for example if you was to uh, um, all the waste will go into that black water and what happens thanks to that chemical which is the A, B and C fluid, which I showed you in the garage, that will break down that waste and allow that to go into a liquid. Because of that, what that allows you to do, for example, when you do flush the toilet, that will use fresh water to flush the system. However, for example, if you was out of wet fresh water, so you'd run out of fresh water, what that will do is it will reuse your black water, which has gone into that tank, um, which sorry, which has gone into your grey tank, which is your wastewater, and that will allow it to flush the system. Your wastewater is simply your water which goes down your plug hole and goes into your separate tank. In the vehicle, you have got three main tanks. You've got your black water, which is for your toilet. You've got your fresh water, which is obviously comes out the tap, and then you have your wastewater, which is all of the contents that go down the drain. So, for example, this has the ability, for if you was to run out of fresh water for your flush, it will simply assign it over to wastewater um, and allow you to flush the system with that. Now, when operating that, you'll notice that you've got a couple of options here. You've got two buttons here and then also a round button on the side there. The first one is a big flush. The second one is a small flush. Now you need to make sure that your pump is on for this and once you've done that you can then simply once you've done the waste and that has dropped out you can simply press that flush and that will flush the entire system now now before doing that you'll notice that you've got this little point here if you click that that'll allow you to open up the blade on the toilet so if i click that as you can see that opens up the blade like so allowing all the waste water uh, or all the waste rather to go straight into the black tank once you've done that allow all the waste to drop down and you can then click your big flush which as i say once the pump's on and you've got water in the system will flush the entire system out you've got a big flush and a small flush depending on what waste has gone through the system and once you've done that all you need to do is simply click that button and as you can see you've now got another cap into there you need to make sure that that is always closed when not in use because that will ensure that no odours escape. Moving through into the rear of the vehicle, you'll notice that you've got storage onto here. Just opening that up as well, you can see that you've got a tank here. As I mentioned before, that houses your glycol solution and that's all been topped up for you. And you've also again got some storage beneath there. Now located underneath this panel is some more drain down points. Now as I mentioned, your drain down points in the vehicle are your boiler drain down, your fresh water drain down and also your waste water drain down. Your fresh water is just located at the top here which I'll show you in a minute. Your boiler drain down is located in the, uh, in the locker um, which is beneath the vehicle as I've shown you. And then your black and waste water uh, drain down is combined into that um, that pump that I showed you on the outside which once un uncoiled you can press the button and that'll completely clean out the system now you have got these two tanks here one's your black which is this uh, back one here and one's your grey which and wastewater which is here now you have got the option of if you wanted directly um, emptying each of these tanks if you didn't want to use that uh, that other pump there on the outside of the vehicle however this is mainly used for if you was to store the vehicle for a long period because it all goes to that pump out on the outside of the vehicle so you can dispose of it that way which is much easier there's no need to simply um, drain down these 
it can all be done on the outside. However, as I say, if you are planning on storing the vehicle for a long period, what you don't want is you don't want any remaining or residual uh, waste to be in these tanks um, and you simply want them to air out. So if that is the case, you need to make sure that they are drained down. To drain them down, you'll notice that on each, you have a blue little toggle there. It's quite hard to see on the video, but just if you can see my finger, which is just there, you have a blue little toggle. You've one there, and then you've also one there. It's a little bit easier to see in that one. Now to drain them down, all you need to do, in essence, they're the little tabs which allow these two tanks to drain down. You have this. This is, in essence, your key. All you need to do is connect this onto that, that point there, and the same onto there, and simply turn, and that'll empty the tank. As I say, you only need to do this when you are, um, of course, uh, 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 um, storing the vehicle. However, you can simply do that using this. With that back in, you can then slot the panel in like so, so you can use it. Now moving on from them final two drain down points, as I say, you've got your fresh water, which is just into here. And as I say, that can all be done on the inside here. Your fresh water tank is similar to other bursters. You have got a black nib on the top here, which you can turn and that will empty your system. This water tank will take up to 120 litres. And if you'd like, you can drain the entire system down to 20 litres. To do that, all you need to do is screw this little nib and you'll get to a little lug. When you get to that lug, you'll actually feel it and it'll almost click. Once you get to that, that will drain the entire system to 20 litres. And in essence, that is a quick drain down point. So, for example, if you wanted to drain that whole system down, but leave a bit of water in. Um, for example, if you're moving off site and you didn't know whether you was going to get any water, you can simply drain this all the way down to 20 litres. So you've still got some. Uh, some water in the vehicle Now if you wanted to drain down the entire system for example if you're moving off site and you're um, Finished with the vehicle you keep screwing that nib all the way past that lug and that'll click Keep screwing and that'll empty the entire system now on the site You'll have a massive grid that you'll drive over and as I say you'll unscrew that and that'll dump out all the water So it's dead simple and dead easy and it's just located here Moving to the rear, you've got your two beds. You'll notice that you've got all your storage above and then also some storage beneath as well, like so. So that concludes the handover video on the Burst Elegant i910. Hope you enjoyed.